So with the Outlast trials due to drop sometime in 2022, this is, I feel, a perfect time to start unpacking what we know already about this exciting prequel to the two games that have already been blessed upon us. Now, I don't really care what your opinions are regarding Outlast 2 being rubbish compared to Outlast, I'm not here to talk about that. I'm just thankful that in a world full of stale horror games, we have a developer who is willing to explore the rough edges of horror games and hone in on the pure psychological aspect of them. Oh, and to put this to rest, there will be single player mode in this game, so stop freaking out. That being said, let's get into today's video. We'll be looking at a character who has been advertised by Red Barrels as Mother Gooseberry. According to what they've already teased us with and addressed in the video trial number two on the Red Barrels website, this is Mother Gooseberry. From what we can see, she will potentially be one of the main threats facing players, as well as Coil of course, but we will look at him in a separate video. The actuality is that according to Hugo Richard, the assistant art director for characters in the game, Gooseberry is a TV show host for Kids TV. In reality, Mother Gooseberry is depraved and downright evil but what else would you expect from Outlast? So it seems that she puts on an outward front, a love and care for children referred to by Red Barrels as a motherly love even. It's probable though that she is no longer a kids TV show host. I mean, come on. They also mention that she has major father issues, which leads us to her creepy puppet. As seen here in the Outlast Trials promo balcony shot, she has something on her hand. This is a hand puppet which is apparently the representation of her father, who was a horrible person. But what caused Mother Gooseberry to become like this? What made her go from a lovable popular TV host to a horrifying test subject in the Outlast trials? For those of you that are a bit murky about the story of Outlast and what the morphogenic engine is, I've done story explain videos for both Outlast games and you can check them out up there, but we'll briefly discuss it here to give you a better idea of the kind of operation Murkoff are running. Anyway, we know from playing the previous installments that the morphogenic engine created and perfected by German scientist Dr. Rudolf Wernicke played upon and attached itself to the past trauma and horror witnessed by his victims who are on the verge of complete madness, as put by Dr. Wernicke here. You're saying the experiment needed a proximity to death, to overwhelming madness. Only a test subject who had witnessed enough horror was capable of activating the engine. Now given that this happened way before the first Mount Massive Asylum incident, you know, when they got shut down in 1969, this was likely their first iteration of the engine itself, although it is stated that Wernicke had created it back in Germany before he was brought to the States as part of Operation Paperclip. This is just a theory, but we don't really know how the engine looked or acted prior to Mount Massive. All we know is that Wernicke perfected it before installing it into the perfect environment, the asylum when Murkoff reopened it in 2009, under the guise of a charitable organisation. But remember, the machine itself wasn't only used to control resulting nanoswarms such as an entity known as the Wall Rider. The engine, as seen through the variants in Outlast and the cult in Outlast 2, showed us that it would create a madness, and in addition to physical changes such as phantom pregnancies and deformities, it seemed to exacerbate certain beliefs or character traits. Hence why Mother Gooseberry's hand puppet is the personification of her assumed to be abusive father. It could be that she had some form of schizophrenia which again was exacerbated by the engine and its effects. We at this moment don't know at what point in her life she was exposed to the engine. She does seem to have had her face removed or even burned but we don't know how this happened. It does seem that a face, whether it's actually hers or not, has been stapled or attached to her head. It's pretty gruesome stuff. In this video, we also hear Coyle stating this to the player. Thank you for volunteering for the therapy. He says, thank you for volunteering for the therapy. Now, could it be that Mother Gooseberry, and Coyle for that matter, volunteered for therapy due to the distress in her life and she was exposed to the morphogenic engine? It could be what this image is referring to. Is this what Murkoff's cover was? They were advertising therapy for people suffering trauma, but instead they were subjected to trials and experiments. We see from this note that it's not just one demographic they want, and they want literally anyone. And given that Murkoff's whole MO is MKUltra and mind control, and that they were conducting mind control experiments on people to use in war, were they just simply creating a weapon, such as Mother Gooseberry and Coil, to hunt down these unfortunate test subjects? Were Murkoff trying to assess how effective their weapon was? 
In the first gameplay trailer released around four months ago, hidden amongst the gameplay elements were documents detailing what was needed by Murkoff for these trials. This particular document is of interest. It mentions Operation Bluebird, and interestingly, it also mentions the word artichoke. Now, it seems that this operation is directly linked to what's going on in Los Alamos. Operation Bluebird was a real operation undertaken by the CIA, which would be focused on the research of interrogation methods. You see, Project MKUltra had three stages to it. The first stage was Project Bluebird, an offshoot was then created and named Project Artichoke, which then in turn progressed to become MKUltra in 1953. Point of Artichoke itself was mentioned in a memo from 1952, which simply stated, can we get control of an individual to the point where he will do our bidding against his will and even against fundamental laws of nature, such as self-preservation? An experiment like this is seen in Outlast 1, from a note detailing that they made a woman use a firearm despite her having a deep-rooted fear and hatred for them. She picked the gun up and later woke up with no memory of the act. From here we can see the type of experiments that Murkoff were putting test subjects through. This sheet in particular shows a medical record. It has a box checked for grand mouths, which, if you're not aware, are seizures or fits. It also lists the date on this record as in the 60s, which makes sense given that Murkoff started conducting these experiments in 1959. But yeah, Red Barrel's description of trials is that we are an involuntary test subject in these trials. But back to Mother Gooseberry. Her part of the game seems to be around dolls, which my guess is linked to her having that motherly love referred to earlier on. I'm just speculating, but this image of a chapel seems to show Mother Gooseberry standing in the background. It appears that female mannequins are sitting up as if they're just simply attending church, and both the victims seem to be male. Now it could be, and remember this is just a theory, that the abuse Mother Gooseberry suffered at the hands of her father is fueling this somehow. The motherly love and desire to protect children from men, like a father in particular, coupled with her hatred of her father, could be what drives her to kill men. I, I don't know, I, I could be way off here. But I'm not sure how big of a part she'll play in the game, as usually red barrels tend to tease characters who are supporting antagonists first, rather than the main antagonist of the game. Same happened with Marta and with Chris Walker. Little fig. <laughs> but then again, we do see her everywhere on the balcony in this makeshift sort of chapel here. I do hope she plays a bigger role because she seems like an awesome and <laughs> a pretty terrifying prospect. But I can't wait to play it myself. Honestly, I've been waiting for this game for so long. If you want to check out my Story Explained videos on both Outlast games, as I mentioned before, you can check them out up there. I will be doing a huge video on Outlast soon. We'll be looking at everything, comics and all, in one long video, so keep an eye out for that one. But that is it for this video. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel. Comment your own theories down below, but for now, take care and I will see you in the next one.